Hello <laughs> and welcome to my very first live with Katie Hopkins. I have um, my glass of wine here and the idea is that you are all having wine o'clock with Katie Hopkins as well. And as many of you will realise, this is partly being done as a protest um, at the fact that we're still bloody well locked down when, in my personal opinion, we absolutely shouldn't be. Um, and we need to be back out there and everybody misses everybody. So cheers to you all from me, Katie. Thank you to everybody for joining me. Clearly, I haven't got a clue what I'm doing, what a live actually is. So if this goes spectacularly wrong or cocks up massively, um, that will actually be, of course, all my fault. And I apologise already. My daughter just accused me of... Um, not actually being on a live at all, of just hiding in my office so that I didn't have to speak to anybody. <laughs> so, but I am actually here. Um, and I thought what we might do is that you lovely people could ask anything you want um, and uh, be a part of this in any way you want. I'm not sure I'm quite ready to add people, or I don't think I have the technical competence to add you all now. Um, but you can ask anything and I will try and answer it without reservation. I also thought maybe we would do this for about half an hour because I appreciate... Well, I want to say that you'd have lives to live, but obviously none of us have got bugger all lives to be living because everything's just gone tits up and we've all been trapped in our own homes like utterly bored bastards for the entire year. So here we all are together. Um, I think one of the things I... Well, one of the reasons I wanted to do this is because... Um, we're probably all a bit sick of the saccharine sweetness we're hearing everywhere. Um, you're not allowed to hear a voice like mine. Um, you're not allowed to hear opinions like mine. It's not okay at the moment. The only thing you're allowed to hear is happy bloody clappy. Um, that everything is jolly. You're allowed to talk about the masked singer. Um, you're allowed to feel sorry for Kate Garraway's husband, which I'm sure we all do, but I'm sure... You know, there's only so much of that we can all take. And you're all supposed to stay, stay safe. If anyone else tells me to stay safe, seriously, I'm probably going to have to take my bottle of wine, which is here, and shove it up their arse, um, quite frankly. I haven't actually drank all of that prior to speaking to you, but I'm very willing to, and more. Um, the whole stay safe thing is really doing my nut in. So... Please, no more stay safe from anybody. All I really care about is that people try and be as free as they can possibly be. Um, stay safe if you want to, but my choice is to do what the bloody hell I like. And I think that was one of the things we wanted to uh, share, maybe some of us, feel that we are really happy, I am really happy for everybody else to live their life exactly as they want. Like, exactly as they please. If you feel really, really scared and you want to wear 15 masks, um, maybe a snorkel, maybe you want to go out in scuba wear, you know, whatever you want to do, uh, do that. Um, if you want to lock yourself away for the rest of your life, uh, maybe if you want to live the rest of your life on a COVID ward, brilliant, you know, or wear hazmat suits to Waitrose. I mean, perfect. Uh, no problem at all. But for Christ's sake, leave me out of it. Just, just go away and do that but let me do what I want to do. And also, for those of us who want to live free, let's have a live free passport where we um, can go to a gym, where we have a passport that is just the live free passport, which accepts that everyone else can do what the bloody hell they like, but we're going to live free, and we're going to live as large as we want. Let's have non-vaccinated pubs. Let's have, like we used to have smokers' pubs. I don't even smoke, but I love smokers' pubs. Because frankly, if someone wants to smoke, brilliant, let them do it in a pub. It was brilliant when pubs smelt of smoke and piss and vomit. Those were the glory days when we used to stick to the carpet. I mean, what better? And it felt kind of rebellious if you ended up going home with someone who was a smoker. It was perfect. What we need, in fact, Tim from Weatherspoons, we need someone to chat to Tim. We need some Weatherspoons to open up spoons, spoons without vax, non-vax spoons. I don't know, I'll think of something snazzy. We need to have pubs that are specifically for people who think COVID is a load of old bollocks, or at least the lockdown is a load of old bollocks, where we can all go together and just crack on. And if you're one of the scaredy ones and the scared people with the crazy eyes that look fearful at all times, even when they're like in Waitrose, then you can not come to our pubs. Don't come to our gyms. In fact, don't come anywhere near me because frankly, I'm done with all of you. 
but that's what we need. Israel's just started off this thing, um, a green card, so that if you've had your vaccine, 50% of Israelis have had their vaccine, they can use their green card and use it to go to pubs and go out and go to restaurants. We need that, but in reverse. We need the opposite of that. We need our own kind of green card that allows us, sane people, to do what the pissing hell we like. Um, so that's my genuine kind of proposal. I will show you something I made uh, for this live. Hold on, just losing my bra strap. It's all going very wrong. Here. So my last potato in the wig, um, he started to sprout tumours because potatoes, as you will know, start shooting. Um, and so he started sort of sprouting tumours. And as much as I detest Boris Johnson now, I don't wish tumours on him. So it was all sort of taken an unfortunate turn. Anyway, this potato in a wig is much better, far less tumory. I think we did agree slightly that I look a bit like the potato in a wig, which is, you know, disappointing. But anyway, we have a new potato in a wig, so we can continue to do more skits. Um, and people are asking me to talk about my arms. And I know this isn't going to, people aren't going to buy this because they think I'm the gobbiest twat in the world. And the annoy, you know, most annoying old hag and all the rest of it. Um, but actually talking about myself self makes me feel quite self-conscious. But we can talk about the arms. We'll talk to, about the arms shortly, I promise. Um, people are also asking me if I will do a new video on Meghan Markle. You'll know that sometimes I turn up as a little bit concerned that I've started stroking the potato in a wig almost like a villain in a Bond thing, but slightly more odd, because I'm stroking Boris. I think I'll put Boris down. don't think Boris needs to be stroked by me. I freaking stroke him, all right. Stroke him with a bloody taser. Um, yes, so <laughs> my arms. Uh, the arm story is that I didn't really have arms for the longest time, and I don't mean that in some sort of thalidomide way, and I Clearly, there's some politically incorrect humour going along here, which will have to be banned from Instagram and, of course, require the banning of me from everything, um, once again. But the arm thing is because, um, well, there's two stories, really. One story is that uh, lockdown means that we're all training more and trying to exercise more because it's the only way we're going to stay sane. Um, and I've been able to run more, so I guess I've got leaner. Um, I wasn't able to run for the longest time after my surgery for my epilepsy. But I am running again now, and that's why I look slightly... People say I've, I've lost weight or whatever. I haven't really. I've just been running. And the arm thing is because uh, for the longest time I didn't have arms. My epilepsy used to dislocate my arms. This is not a sob story. I have no um, sympathy for myself. So I used to dislocate my arms with my seizures fits and then I had them sewn back on. I have like um, stitching, they got some wire and sewed them back on, both of them. And so I now have arms. And so because a surgeon kindly gave me back arms that don't dislocate, I uh, then decided that my, it was my responsibility to then train my arms because someone had given me the gift of arms back that don't come out of their sockets anymore. So that's why they look like this. And the reason, um, I guess they look like this as well as I can pull up. And pull ups are hard, but everybody can do them and I can help show you how. And I will promise to do that as well. There are ways of getting yourself so that you can do 10 plus pull ups. And that's where these come from. So that's that in short term. Um, secondly, people are asking, why am I not such a cow? Or there's a sort of confusion about um, me being a cow or everybody thought I was a cow and now I'm not such a cow. How has it happened? Or did I become less of a cow? <laughs> I mean, lots of things I've been called over time. And actually, lots of them are very fair. My own mother calls me haggard. Um, you know, so the whole melted wheelie bin thing. I get the white chicks thing. I could totally see that as well. I do look like um, Boris Becker in certain lights, early mornings. Definitely Boris Becker, I see it, honestly. Iggy Pop, I see that too. There's a lot of names I've been called that I think are actually quite accurate. I um, also think that if you put yourself out there uh, and um, are willing to be in the public eye or maybe you agree to do a programme or maybe you agree to go on Big Brother or any of these things, 
then you can't decide what people will think of you. You have to accept what they think of you. And that's not always going to be nice. And that's something I try and say to young people as well. You know, all of these posting of their pictures on um, whatever forum is not everybody's going to like you all the time. And that's okay. Because if you're only posting things because people will like you, it's all going to fall apart at some point, isn't it? And I think it's why, actually, most of reality TV shows now are boring as shit. Because there isn't anybody kind of like me around anymore that's willing to kind of just say what they think. And if you don't like it, that's all right. Um, we also ended up associating, you know, disagreeing with hating someone. So when we disagreed with them, we thought we had to hate them. And that's kind of what happened with me. So people are like, I hate what she says. I hate her. She's a monster. Whereas actually what we can do, and we've kind of proven this here on the lovely Instagram family that I have, is that we can agree or disagree, but we don't actually have to hate the other person. It's fine. We can just not agree. We can disagree and that's all right. Um, and I really, I wonder sometimes, I watch some of this reality stuff sometimes, and you can see these people. They're so desperate to be popular nothing is real because no one's saying their stuff no one's venting any of their honesty and you see that now with the covid bollocks as well where no one is is speaking honestly about it the celebrities have all gone quiet they don't say anything unless it's you know stay home stay safe love to kate garraway um they pick and choose who they pick on so when Amanda Holden went to go and visit her parents for her 50th, I mean, good on her. Brilliant. I hope she had a glass of... Do you know what? I haven't had a drink for ages. Wait, one. Chat amongst yourselves. Um, when Amanda Holden went to visit her parents, I say, brilliant. Do what the pissing hell you want. If your 50th birthday, visit who the bloody hell you like. So, so good on her for going wherever the hell she wanted. But... I noticed that, for example, when Amanda Holden breaks the rules, Piers Morgan goes quiet because those two are best buddies. So it's the way that there's selective rules, isn't it? I think that people find tricky. There's these targets that people think it's OK to be mean to, like the Instagram influencers. The pile on on those kids was revolting. But when one of their own mates does something, Amanda Holden, everybody's supposed to just back off and say nothing because Piers Morgan's best mates with Amanda. The hypocrisy of it all is just outrageous. Um, someone is saying, Kate Garraway fed up with her. I know, I know, and we're not allowed to say it because obviously our husband's really poorly. Um, but I do know what you mean. I'm fed up with hearing about, I see Kate Garraway and I think, oh... And also, just speaking personally, if I was Kate Garraway's husband, if, if it was me, I'd want to be knocked on the head. I mean, I say to my kids and I say to all of you, if you ever see me having lain in a bed for a year and a half without a life, not being able to sort of walk or breathe or take a piss on my own, please just, you know, end it. Like, you know, maybe come and knock me over the head or those jihadis that were going to come and chop my head off. Bloody do it, darlings. I have no wish to live if I can't run about and be generally obnoxious to everybody. So the Kate Garraway thing, I totally hear you. And you can't say anything because it's Kate Garraway. <laughs> There's this weird sainthood thing that's happened. But enough with the sympathy on that. I think uh, we're a bit done with victims. I think we all need a bit more of a laugh. <laughs> anyway, thanks to everybody with their kind... Listen, you don't have to write kind things... You know, you don't have to write that I'm great. You really don't. You can hit it with the horse-faced hag stuff. I'm, I'm kind of better with that than I am with compliments. People will know that um, I'm not so good with the old compliment stuff. Um, I wonder as well how you guys are actually getting along. Because there is a sort of serious side to all of this. And that I won't really worry for people now. It was sort of okay on the first lockdown... Um, it was sort of all right when it was sunny. Maybe for some people it was sort of a novelty as well. This now has got beyond... I know a lot of people have got to that point. I had a go on Monday where I was like, for Christ's sake, are people genuinely sitting in their cars because, because they just need a break from their family or each other or a break from themselves or just five minutes peace? People needing to sit in their cars, people sitting in their cars or even driving to work, looking at a wall and thinking, 
you know, life isn't worth this. And that's what really worries me as well. And it worries me that no one's really talking about the numbers. I have lots of emails from ambulance staff telling me they're not allowed to speak about the increase in suicides that are going on, that those numbers are being suppressed. And we've just heard that Cuomo in New York, which I know feels like not relative to us, not related to us, but they lied about the number of deaths in care homes because they were trying to protect their donors who were a hospital group. All I'm trying to say is we're not getting our hands round the truth of this. And when I see people going out and they have to be cut down from a tree and we'll all know someone like that, um, that's where we need to try and hold on just to get ourselves through and then we can regroup and then work out if this life is worth living or not. Um, but I worry for everybody that's making that decision already or just can't see a way through. And that's why part of doing this live is about asking people just to hang on in there, even though this is completely shit. You know you're being lied to and the politicians have just grabbed all the power they can. Um, as for myself, people are asking, will I be um, taking the vaccine? I really hope not. Um, what I've noticed is it's not legal for them to make us take a vaccine by law. You can't make it mandatory that people take vaccines. But of course, what we've seen is that coming in through the back door, if you'll pardon the expression. But by saying that no jab, no job, of course, people need a job. People need to pay their mortgage if they have one or their rent. And then we see no travel without a vaccine. I'm hoping it'll just be that you can still get tested at the airport. So we'll work together through and around this. Um, but it's obviously really tricky. Um, someone here saying I'm sick of all the Black Lives Matter stuff and Black Lives Matter training at work. And, and I know we all feel a bit of that as well. Not, not necessarily about Black Lives Matter. Um, my personal opinion is it's all a load of old bollocks as well. I, um, I'm sick of the fact that there's two different rules that apply. That policing for regular Brits, policing for patriots is different to policing for... Black Lives Matter, I've watched that myself when I went to the Black Lives Matter protests pretending to be one of them. Um, I went dressed as a sort of vegan who'd never had sex in her life as an apologist for my own white skin. And um, I even had a sign saying, I don't understand, but I stand. <laughs> Whereas, of course, inside, none of that was true. Um, there were even posters at the Black Lives Matter rally with my name on people slagging me off and then the hunt for me was on even though I was there amongst them dressed like a sad vegan um, but my point is there are two different kinds of um, uh, policing that go on and I've spoken to police officers who say exactly that it's easier for them it's more cost effective it's cheaper uh, to police sort of law-abiding white people than it is to police um, BLM protesters or people protesting for cause that is colour. It's easier to go and find some, you know, law abiding people. That's easy policing and police prefer easy policing because they're scared for their careers. So I think that's how that works. Uh, personally, I think BLM is a load of bollocks. I think taking a knee is a load of bollocks. And I really, really, really love um, the supporters and the fans who made a massive riotous noise when the football lads took um, a knee and they weren't having any of it. A huge respect for those individuals. And I love the fact that the media try and hide that stuff away. They can't get rid of it fast enough. A bit like Biden being booed um, at the Super Bowl, I think it was. And the media got rid of that really quickly as well. Um, right. Now I'm looking for some more questions from all of you. And I promise to try and answer them honestly and faithfully. Um, vegan who never had sex. Yes. Not sure all of this commentary is exactly the government narrative. I think maybe it should have some kind of health warning. I wonder how long it's going to take for this live feed to be to be removed from from existing. How when they remove it altogether? Um, why did I join UKIP? Uh, because I feel that um, I have to do something. I feel that I can't just sit on social media forever. I have to try and make an impact. Um, certainly for me, UKIP were the authentic party of Brexit. Um, one of the problems we have on our side is that the boys um, worry mostly about their penises and their egos, and none of them will work together. 
So Farage, for example, would never work with me. Um, Lawrence Fox will never work with Farage. He'll never work with me. And Tommy will never work with this one or that one. Anne won't work with this one or that one. The, the craziness is that none of them will all join together. And of course, if you imagined our side all working together, what a terrific team we'd be. Um, so people won't work together. My heart goes with the people who started out all of the kind of fight for uh, real Brits who just want to work hard and do the best for their family. That's all I really care about. Uh, wherever you come from, it doesn't matter as long as you want to try and do the best for this country and you love it and you'll support everybody in it. That's it. Uh, and that's really UKIP for me. So um, that's why I don't really buy into reform or remain or re what is it? Reform, reclaim, all of the re's. Um, they're just reincarnations of UKIP and they're because the boys want to have the stage all to themselves. Uh, unfortunate, but true. Um, <laughs> Harry and Meghan. Yeah, we will address that. There will be a Meghan video coming soon. I can feel it coming on, can't you? <laughs> and uh, the announcement of their pregnancy lying under that bloody tree um, with their bump and their bare feet. I mean, Jesus, does Harry not own a bloody iron anymore? Seriously, that boy used to be absolutely my favourite royal. I suspect a lot of you, your favourite royal as well. Prince Harry used to be the best of us. Like, he used to turn up in Vegas with a bevy of blonde beauties balanced on his balls. Um, you know, he was he was great stuff. He was a, a military guy. He flew, I guess, helicopters or at least could sit in them looking vaguely macho. Um, he was a darling of us and a really good supporter um, of lots of his charities. Um, and sadly, once he met Meghan, he turned into sort of the dull guy at the wedding that no one wants to sit next to. Um, can't really stand uh, Harry and Meghan, if I'm honest. I just think the level of disrespect they showed uh, was a little bit off the chart. I also think... You know, if they don't want to be part of all of the royal family and the circus, if they don't want that stuff, why the bloody hell did she marry into it? Why not marry some other punter? I mean, really, why not find someone else from Suits or any of the people she had to screw on screen? Could she not just have picked one of them? Also, if you don't want to be part of the royal family and do your royal duties, as I like to say when I'm being Megan, um, why is it that she chose to have the wedding and all of that publicity she just wanted to go and, you know, blow opera, or Oprah. Why not just go and blow Oprah? Because that would have not been as effective, obviously, as a D-list actress. She needed that royal bounce and she got it off the ginger one, um, which is all very unfortunate. You'll know back in the day um, when I used to be known as more of a cow. There was a whole thing about ginger babies that really kicked off for a while. But yes, it's very sad uh, about Harry and Meghan. And I wish they would just sort of bugger off and stay off. What seems to be the problem at the moment is they're not completely buggering off. They're still sort of loitering around. And uh, we just prefer that they went away altogether. Also, she does do that thing with her well, baby bump, doesn't she? I mean, I've got, I've got three children. And at no point did I feel the need to kind of hold them when they were in, as if they, at any moment they might drop out of my vagina. Like, I was fairly certain and fairly confident I could, they would just stay inside but she's one of those weird mums that has to like rub this thing the whole time as if to accentuate that she's definitely pregnant. We're going to see a lot more of that as well, I think, coming out of Meghan in the next few months. <sighs> That's Harry and Meghan. Anyway, um, I also believe Meghan didn't come along by chance. Um, she feels too much of a, she's been too much of a destructive influence for that. I heard, I don't know if it's true, this could be tabloid Hopkins at work, that she actually wore Princess Diana's perfume to her first date with Prince Harry. If that's true, that's really freaky. Because one of the things people remember most about people they've lost or loved, right, is smells, isn't it? You can smell a smell and you're re reminded of that person that you've lost. So if she did wear Diana's perfume to that first date... <laughs> Yucky yuck. Um, anyway, I, I see that time is drawing to a close. I don't want to drone on and on and bore you all to death. But I wanted to leave you, love you and leave you um, with a few words, I suppose. Uh, number one is your homework when you leave here is Billy Joel, uh, my life. OK, so Billy Joel, my life. And if you're like 10 years old, you don't know who Billy Joel is um, and you don't know the song, my life, please write this down. Billy Joel, My Life. Fast forward, if you don't like the intro, it does bang on a little, and get to the part of the chorus. Um, 
it's very important that you do this when you leave this chat and you get to the chorus of my life and you turn it up really, really, really loud uh, because that, to me, is a kind of anthem. Um, you know, this is my life and I'll, you know, I'll live it how I bloody like. That whole phrase of you do you uh, and let us uh, do us, that's really what I want us to do. Um, I want everybody to hang on in there, please. Please don't go and take yourself off to a tree. If you're going to do that, bloody well email me and I'll abuse you in some way. But just hang on in there. Please know that you're not on your own with any of your thoughts. This is properly shit. Like, properly shit. And just because someone on Radio 2 isn't saying, listen, this is properly shit, it is. It really is. And when you feel properly shit, there's lots of other people. I know no one really feels like picking up a phone and telling someone, I feel really shit today. But lots of us do. Um, this has been absolutely the worst thing this country have ever seen. It's the most disappointing thing this country has ever seen. And I'm truly sorry for the pathetic idiots running this country. And we will find a way back from this. Um, but for now, we just need people to hang on. And also remember um, that whatever you need to do to make yourself feel better, whatever that is, is absolutely the right thing. If there's a tiny thing that makes you feel better, that could be shaving your legs, that could be oiling yourself down and smearing yourself against the neighbour's window. No, no, don't do that. You see, these things come out and really they shouldn't. Whatever it is, get jars of daffodils. This is an excellent idea. In fact, I have them in the kitchen. I should go grab them. Hold on. Wait here. I'm coming straight back. Okay, this felt too important not to do on my life. <laughs> not the most professional thing I've ever done. Hold on, I've got to get back up on my little seat. So look, this is, this is how we're going to survive this, darlings. Okay, I'm back on my perch. Look, this. So do this. Wherever you go, just get bucket loads of this. This is how I cope with it all. Um, and they're only a pound each. So look. If you're like me and you've never ever taken government money in your life and you're not on pissing furlough, which is a freaking joke anyway, um, then do this. Maybe put them around anywhere you sit a lot, where you have breakfast, if you're eating a meal, do this. You can even hide from your bloody kids. Look, behind the daffodils, it's what I do. If someone's eating too noisily, I'm like, right. And I will end on this. Let me find a suitable one. Now, I don't know if any of you followed me in Big Brother. And where I went in is the most hated big brother housemate of all time, very rude. Um, I mentioned that my vagina was like a, what did I say now? A battered daffodil. And you see, I think this makes the point rather well, doesn't it? I think, you know, it's still true, darlings, it's still true. So you can bang on about my arms all you want, but other parts of me look more like this, I'm just, just saying. Um, so my darlings, hang on in there, don't go anywhere. Um, this is absolute madness, and I'm sorry that you're being lied to by so many people. Um, but maybe, you know, it's taken a pandemic for me not to seem as such a cow. Which means I must have been a really big cow before. But if it took a pandemic for me to seem less of a cow, you know, there are brighter days ahead. So, tomorrow, oh, Billy Joel, when you leave here, Billy Joel, my life. Very, very loud, get naked, don't do the Vaseline on the neighbour's window thing. Two. Tomorrow, daffodils, one pound a bunch. Don't pay any more. Haggle if you have to. Tell someone to piss off. Buy daffodils. Put them bloody everywhere. Uh, dance naked. Smear yourself up against people, darlings. Live, laugh, love. And, um, and just all the very best from me. And if you are in a very dark place, you have nobody else, uh, I'm always here. Katie at katiehopkins.co.uk. Um, and I do read my own emails because... I'm not such a cow after all. Um, I'm wishing you all a very good night. Uh, cheers. Um, keep drinking. And we will, I'll get in touch with Tim and see if we can't open a few pubs for people who think COVID is a load of old bollocks and won't ever have the vaccine. Wishing you all a very happy evening, uh, day, wherever you are. And I'll speak to you all soon.